What's up everybody? Today we're going to be making some stained glass out of wood and resin. Like all of my videos, I'm going to leave all of the mistakes in. That way you can learn from them and hopefully not repeat them yourself. I've never done this before, so it was definitely a learning process. And because of that, there were some pretty major errors in my design and the materials that I use. But they're all things that could be fixed if I saw a video like this and knew ahead of time to avoid those mistakes. And here we have my first mistake. Can you spot it? Ladies and gentlemen, ear pods are not hearing protection. I'm using a table saw in a tiny basement. Protect your ears or you'll regret it later. I'm a big fan of using double-sided mounting tape to secure my workpieces on my CNC machine. I think it works very well Though in this case, I would definitely recommend using more than a few pieces like this. The tape held just fine, but the pressure of the end mill caused the piece of wood to bow in the middle. And that could have been avoided by just adding a few more pieces of tape towards the center. For the design, I'm going to use the same Veroni object that I used in a previous video. I used the Veroni generator tool in easel to do this. In theory, you could use the methods in this video to make the design pretty much anything you wanted. It doesn't have to be an abstract shape. Before using any sort of colored resin on bare wood, I like to use some sort of sealer, especially if there's a lot of end grain, because the wood will absorb some of that resin, and then you end up with some colored fibers and things like that where you may not necessarily want them in your design. I cover one side with Tyvek tape. This tape is often used in resin molds and things like that because it is so thick and rugged and the adhesive is very strong. All right, now it's time for the messy part. So I'm mixing up this resin and I'm using actually just good old fashioned food dye for food coloring. And the reason I'm doing this instead of using paint is that Food dye is translucent, where most paints are just going to make it a solid color. I'm mixing the colors one at a time, and this is basically just so they don't dry out or harden on me before I get a chance to pour them. I actually did not plan the color scheme out in advance. I kind of did it on the fly. I regret that a little bit. I definitely recommend going into this stage with a plan, especially if you're using a resin that has a really fast cure time. To make sure that no dust or debris settles on the resin while it's curing, uh, this is especially important if you have pets, I covered it with a cardboard box after making sure that the inside of that box was clean. I then left this for a day to fully cure. All right, and here's the moment of truth. As you can see, this didn't work out like I had hoped. I used some polyester resin that I had on hand rather than epoxy resin. While curing, the resin heated up, melting the Tyvek tape, causing the colors to mix together and leaving behind a bunch of bubbles and cracks. Honestly, the best course of action here would be to start over. But I'm no quitter, so we're going to see this through to the end. And you can see some techniques that I use to try and salvage this into the work of art I had hoped it would be and see what the final product looks like. After finally getting the surface flat, I use progressively finer sandpaper. Here I only go down to about 220. If this was going to be the final coat, final product for this, I would probably go even finer. Resin's a little different than wood in this regard. You could potentially go up to like a thousand grit with resin to make it silky smooth. But to fix this, I'm actually going to put another coat of resin on top of it. And because of that, I think 220 will be sufficient. I use a sponge and a plastic bristled brush to clean out all the resin dust and the various bubble holes and cracks in the piece. Then I use a box cutter 
to cut out around the bubbles and various nooks and crannies where I want resin to fill in. Filling in bubbles with resin is difficult because it has a tendency to just create more bubbles. So cutting out a larger section and then filling it in uh, can be a lot easier. Some of the cracks go all the way through, so I'm covering one side again with tape. This time I'm just using regular painter's tape as opposed to Tyvek. Tyvek is really sticky and I didn't want to leave a sticky surface on the other side. Uh, but this should be sufficient to keep the resin from leaking through. I'm going to take a gamble here and use the same polyester resin because I'm putting a much thinner coat over the top. I use a pick to try and force the resin into the various crevices and pop any bubbles that arise as the resin works its way through the cracks. This time I closely monitor the resin as it's hardening to make sure that we don't have any other incidents that could be avoided. After the second coat of resin had fully cured, I remove the tape and use a box cutter to just cut around the edge where there was some spillover. And the results are surprisingly pretty awesome. The, the areas where the resin bled over actually made some pretty cool tie-dye looking patterns that I'm impressed with. If I were to do this again, I would actually probably find a way to incorporate this intentionally into the design <laughs> instead of a serendipitous accident. Alright, so I've made a thing. Now what? Since this is supposed to be stained glass, it should probably hang from a window. So what I'm going to do is attach a eyelet to the top and then use a suction cup to put it onto the window. My plan B for this, if the suction cup was not adequate to hold the weight of this, was to use some double-sided tape without foam backing, just some clear tape to try and fix it to the window. Alternatively, I thought it might be cool to attach a magnet to the back and then have someone else run around to the outside of the window and place another magnet on the other side of the glass. Honestly, I have no idea if that would work or not. Alright, so that's the final product. I admit that I thought this thing was destined for the trash can, but I was able to salvage it and I actually really like how it looks in my kitchen. I hope this video has given you some sort of inspiration and the permission to go ahead and try and make something that you've never made before, even if you don't know how, and take a few risks. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, hit the like button. If you want to see more of my content, hit that subscribe button. And you can check out more woodworking on Instagram at RickDIY.